Hey y'all, in this video, I'm gonna give you my thoughts and a slight review of the 24 to 70 F4 S lens while I do a little bit of street photography. Let's go. Today, we're in Chattanooga again. I'm gonna do a little bit of street photography today. I've got the Nikon Z6. Oh, look, that's some beautiful bright light on the lens. I've got the Nikon Z6 with me. I've got some uh, extra batteries. And then I've got the 24 to 70 S lens, the F4 variant. What I'll do is do a little bit of an impromptu review on the handling of the lens and how well it works. This. Uh, this is the kit lens that came with my camera, and it actually works phenomenally well. These... I can't get past the noise of that Mustang going by. That car was very loud. All right, here we are. We're in downtown. I'm gonna try to find some interesting subjects to get a photo of. And I'm just gonna walk around in the lower area down here. And then afterwards, I'm gonna go eat lunch with Teresa. Got me some coffee at Pete's. Got about an hour and a half on my parking meter. So let's get started. All right, the first thing uh, that I'd like to talk about about this lens is the fact that you, you have to turn it on. And uh, it's, and that's metaphorically speaking, it has a storage position where it compresses down to shorter than 24 millimeters and until you open the lens, the camera won't take a photo. So it's got, a, it even has a display warning that comes up, shows it. It's a function of a new lens, so it's, it's a learning curve. But all of my other lenses, literally all of them, don't do that. So it can be a hassle. So you, you just gotta learn to work with it. So today I'm using the Zoom F1 field recorder with my, uh, this is just the regular GoPro. It isn't the full vlog rig. It's just a little GoPro on a stick. And the reason I'm running that is cause it's very compact. It's easy to put away when I'm not using it. I don't have this big mechanism with a tripod. I do have the GoPro selfie stick that has the little tiny tripod built into the base. So it allows me to set it up on tables and things. But for the most part, I'm trying to keep my gear sort of light. So all I've got on me is my camera. I've got a couple of spare batteries for the GoPro, a spare battery for the camera. And um, I've got this Zoom F1 because it gives me better audio than the mic and the GoPro. If there's a lot of wind, this will do better than that will. So that's kind of the reason for that. But I'm set up right here in front of the Tivoli. As you can see, all those lights, that's what's lighting me right now. And I'm trying to get something with the Happy Holidays sign in it. I got this shot of the dial on the bicycle. I set this focus trap up, got myself positioned where my shadow wouldn't be in frame, shooting it at 24 millimeters. It, everything was beautiful. And I fire the shutter when he's perfectly aligned with the shadow of the street lamp. <laughs> then I went to the other side and attempted to get one there. And it really didn't work. Might have another opportunity with this lady with the stroller right here. So I'm gonna try to set up my focus strap again, see if I can get something with that. I think I actually got the shot. I actually kind of like the stroller. The colors and all the image looks really good. That's something I've noticed about this 2470, or it's the combination of the lens and the camera is that the color rendition is fabulous. It's just, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I'm shooting straight out of camera JPEGs for the most part today because it's easier than doing a lot of heavy edits for street photography. I prefer the, the JPEGs right out of the camera, especially if you, can, if you can get it right in camera, it just saves you so much time in editing. You know, if I've got one I like in particular a lot more, then I'll edit that one in a raw file because I'm shooting JPEG and raw and this XQD card writes so fast that it's almost instantaneous to write on the memory card anyway so I just write them both then I can just pick and choose which ones I want to edit with raw files makes sense to me
people complain about shooting in midday sun. I find it not challenging, but not bad either. I use the light that I get. Whatever time I get to go shoot, I just enjoy it. The sun is our biggest light source on earth. <laughs> so I use it whenever I'm out. And it's, uh, I'm trying to think of the right words here. There is no such thing as bad light, okay? There's good and better. Use the light that you have. I don't get to do a lot of sunsets or sunrises for that matter. I, I finally got a foggy morning photo that I had to doctor a little more in editing because I wanted it foggier, but I, there wasn't no, there wasn't enough. The wind was blowing the fog out. By the time I got the camera set up, it was already blown them away. But point being is you work with what you have and yeah, the sun's coming back. So here comes the sun. <laughs> Yeah, I'll stick to my day job. Singing's not in my future. <laughs> but I got the I got the juxtaposition shot of the curb with the watcher step with my feet in it. You know, it's the whole I don't know if it's juxtaposition or if it's the oxymoron kind of thing, but we're we're getting cloud cover that's not like flowing in front of the sun from time to time, so it'll give from soft box white light to direct sun and back and it's just shoot what you can with what you got but i'm having a good time so let's go further and today i keep finding myself gravitating towards 24 millimeters for some reason it's i'm getting like really close to things like getting down low and getting extra to the building but it's giving me that that really wide distorted perspective look and it's just a different view that I'm not used to seeing since I normally shoot fairly long, you know. I really like this lens, mainly because its focus is razor sharp. It has pretty much zero chromatic aberration or color shift or whatever you want to call it. It's almost perfect lens, just basically. The lens doesn't weigh very much, it's really light. The autofocus is instantaneous, I mean, I don't know how you would measure the autofocus speed. It's so quick. And basically, um, I've got the touch screen set to touch autofocus. So I touch the screen, it's in focus right then. Now I'm gonna head back down Chestnut and we're gonna see what I can find on the way down to here, heading back to the truck. I've walked almost all the way to the river. And uh, now I'm gonna head back with the sun kind of in my face coming from the left side to where it was to my back heading down. All right, let's see what I can find. The streets are so broad down here though. I can't shoot across the street at 70 millimeters and get close to the subject. So I'm trying to just basically concentrate on subject matter that is on the same side of the street as me. You know, you can get an environmental shots across the street, but well, like, here you go. There's a lady carrying her young child opposite street. Apparently they're going to the Creative Discovery Museum. I'll just get a quick frame of this. See how small they are in the frame? <laughs> All right, I'm waiting on a cloud to move over in front of the sun because what I've got is I've got this waterfall right here. And this waterfall is a water feature in front of uh, whatever, hope this is the double tree by Hilton. And what I wanna do is I wanna get my camera set up and do as long of an exposure as I can to try and get this water blur on this fountain. With the sky in the background, this kind of, it, it creates a super high contrast image and I'm trying to slow down my shutter. And I've got the ISO as low as it'll go, the aperture all the way up. I've even marked it to underexposed by a third of a stop. So it'll um, hold the shutter closed a little bit. I'm gonna change that, I'm gonna overexpose it by a third. That'll open the shutter a little longer. I didn't think of that, I had it backwards. Hi, ah, here comes my cloud. All right, let me get my photo. Okay, let's get this set. I'm gonna change that exposure comp to a third of a stop overexpose. Get it right here, focus on the waterfall. It's handheld. It's kind of got a pretty neat look to it. I'm getting that wispy water look. It looks really good. All right, now what I'm gonna do is pump the contrast. I really like this as a high contrast image because it's making the building look black 
and it's allowing the sky to be blue in the frame. It just looks very chaotic. It looks good though. And the sun's back. <laughs> Got our photo just in time. All right, let's move. Wow, the wind's picking up a lot. Let's see if I can get this. Oh, I got water on my lens. Yeah, it's boiling the water. Okay. Yeah, crud. Got water drops all over the front element. I have to dry that off on my shirt. <sighs> Figures, come on. See? See it? Mm -mm. Do everything. Do anything for the shot. All right. Let's go down and find something else interesting to photograph. The only thing that made that better is had there been a person in the scene somewhere. Man. You just take what you can get sometimes. Sometimes the composition you're looking for is right in front of you. And what you need is, of course, there's a bunch of machinery noise. Sometimes the composition that you're looking for is right in front of you, but you need the right subject to make it actually work. What I needed was, was just like a single person, preferably in a white coat, or maybe a light brown coat, or a solid color and I wanted to capture them right in front of that gray door with all the graffiti on it and you know, right, surrounded by the red bricks you know and it's just a nice kind of clean flat backdrop and I couldn't get the right subject in the frame so I thought I, I did take a couple but they're kind of meh <laughs> all right let's see what else we can find Those doors are super symmetrical. I mean, the bag of garbage could go, but if you get over here and you punch in, as you can see, that red framing would look really good with someone walking by those doors. I would really like to find someone in like a really strong yellow or white overcoat or something like that, passing in front of them. It'd look really cool. Or maybe even it'd be raining and and someone buzz, bundled up, you know, fighting off the elements. It'd be just kind of cool. So I'm gonna try to commit that to memory and maybe come back there again. All right, thanks for going along with me today. I've had a real good time shooting some street photography. I would have liked to have gotten a few other photos that just needed people in them, but the one in front of the Anastasia Delicatessen would have been awesome with a person coming forward through the frame. Passing through it backwards is okay, but coming through it forward would have been better. To wrap it up, the, the 24 to 70 F4 is an excellent little lens. F4 aperture isn't the end of the world. It's, yes, it is limiting a little bit in background blur, but it's not bad. It still does really well. It performs exceptionally well at street. It's lightweight, it's compact. The zoom system is smooth, has no creep. It's glass is phenomenal. It takes amazing photos. There is pretty much, Nikon figured out how to pretty much eliminate the, uh, color shift issues that are that plague their older lenses you know there's no fringing and there's no you know you're not you're not seeing the you don't have to use color correction where it does the the green line or the purple fringe all that's gone the autofocus is is instantaneous and silent the the lens just works it just works so with that this is david the georgia photographer and if you haven't subscribe to the channel the subscribe button's over here the next video coming up that would be best for you is over there <laughs> so until next time get your camera out and go take a picture with it all right